literally, <laughs> literally finished streaming an hour ago. It stepped out, it took a shower, put a little face thing on, and I'm back. I I can't I can't stop. I get it. The pale. The blue. I get it now. Holy. Okay, so we ended the episode an hour ago on talking to what we assumed was a sexual assault victim, but apparently wasn't, and was instead in cahoots with the man hanging from the tree. There's a lot going on. Hey, Kim, how's it going? Looks like we have more to discuss with those so-called hardy boys. Half their reasoning just went out the window. Yeah, you think this might be cooperative? Nothing will make them respect the RCM, but it will disrupt the game they prepared for us. We just tripped off one layer of whatever it is. Her decision to not corroborate their story was definitely not part of the plan. Why did she let us tell us all that? What else could she have done? Lie? She saw there was no way to lie and get away with it. I'm sure she had to lie when I'm if known. If not you, then me. It was a smart move from her. Something's off here. You think so? Yeah. She seems forthcoming. And usually so. Yeah. Being forthcoming about some things is a good way to obscure other things. That's true. I did have that feeling. Her voice was so melancholy. It almost sounded like she was obscuring, like lying, but. Best liars are always forthcoming. I don't know. Anyway, we should move. I suspect our investigation will bring us back here soon enough. Yeah, probably. Well, we have to do a few things. Let's open this door. The same small, heavy door. No lock in sight. I don't know. Lieutenant Euphrater. Double Euphrater, thank it you. It is not the first closed door we found in this building. There is also your mysterious blue kitchen door. Do you think it's important? The further we get, the more this building seems to be tied to the case. Below, the hostile cafeteria creaks and groans under your added weight. A skeleton mm. of composite support beams and cantilevers. A dull thump. Somewhere inside, a wind brace rattles from the imperceptible motion of the building. The vigilantes, the cadaver, and a number of people connected to the case are in or around this building. This door is part of it. It's not unimportant. Merging it. See, the main investigation of the door below are merging to a stereo investigation. I hate it when that happens. Push. It's barred from the inside. You hear the bar rattle in the brackets. Sounds like it's heavy, too. Very sturdy. Anti-object task force initiates. Anti-object task force experts. We need more physical instruments. Hold on. Uh, physical instrument, we don't have any yet, but we do have clothes for it. Shivers, half light. All right, good enough. The We're kicking the door in. 28%? No easy. Sight. Shit. Ow, my foot. <laughs> you kick it. Gung-ho style, entering the premises style, <laughs> but the door fails to respect the force. All you hear is the bar rattling inside, laughing at you. All right, let's trash the place. <laughs> let's not. Your foot is ready to explode and punish this object. Disrespecting the force? Kick the door. Ow. The door receives a thorough disciplining. Its pain and groveling is much to your liking. Yay, we got our morale healed by kicking the door. Sucking that door. <laughs> the same small, heavy door. No lock in sight. Kick the door again, because we're cool that way. God damn it. God damn it. Demolish the place. It takes a drag of her sick nods. I don't see how this is going to give new results. There must be another way in there. Below, in the union box, was there something behind the window? In the hawthorn branches, brushing against the glass. No one knows. It is a fleeting feeling. God damn it. I put a whole point in physical uh, instrument specifically to kick that door. This window. 
and it did not work. God damn it. I don't want to inspect your medicine cabinet. That feels weird. We'll talk to Titus and the gang. Can I try looking through this window again? Behind the dock workers, a light window. The hawthorn branches scrape the glass like bony fingers. Forty-two percent. There's a yellow. Yes. To one of the yes. Branches. Light yellow, faded with time. A tiny splash of color in the blackness of the thicket, hanging from it, a bronze key. Oh, uh, what? It's close enough to the latch up there. One can slide it open and just take it. Surely not a coincidence. Someone's hit a key in the bush. Uh. Can you let me slide by and grab the thing? I don't know about that. I'm comfortable here. <sighs> don't think any sliding would really help right now. God damn it. Sorry, fucko. Looks like you're gonna have to go bush diving. Good fucking luck with that. The God. Hawthorne's got a bitch of a bite. I'm gonna enjoy the sight of you in the bushes out there. God damn it. With a loud thud, the old man stands up, pushes the window open, grabs the key from the hawthorn branch, and slides it across the table to you. Oh, thanks! The key is brass. Workshop spare is etched into its bow. The old man closes the window and sits back down in silence. He just seems like he doesn't want to deal with everything. Come on, man. We were just having some fun. Where's the harm in? I'm tired of listening to your shit. Hmm. Thank you. Don't thank me. I don't give two shits about your key. There is a silence around this man's words. Unlike Titus, they're afraid of him. That's the type of respect he commands. I wonder what it opens. Could open the door in the kitchen, the blue door. It says workshop. Ooh. Spare. Maybe there's a workshop there. Didn't even know it was there. Boys. Boys. No idea. Never even seen it. Someone must have hidden it there before this room became our place. Well, okay. Well, well. Now I really want to. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna go inside the the blue door. I I, I need to know. You see. A heavy stick. The key fits the dimple lock. Oh my god! To turn it after all these years. But then the lock clicks. The blue door! Dust rises before you like mist. A tomb? Haunted by regal spirits from distant ages. No. Smells like engine grease and cut wood. A workshop. Master investigator. Yeah. You just can't keep yourself away from locked and hidden places, can you? It, yeah, that's my duty. Attaboy, the world's secrets were made for you. They wait patiently for you to uncover them. The jam rock shuffle. Oh, to look, just look through stuff? I kind of want to learn about Motorway South. That's kind of fascinating. I'm going to wait for, for Wasteland of uh, Reality, though. Wherein. Oh, I was kind of hoping it'd be more car stuff. Oh, it's the old pinball place. Oh, shit, the pinball area that, that went out of business. Oh, shit, five real. Over there, in the corner. A pinball machine. Not just any pinball machine. This is the pinnacle of pinball. Oh. Cornelius Gordy and the Mountain Goats. It's oh. lit. You can't wait to get your hands on it. Okay. Kim, are you seeing what I'm seeing? The pinball machine. Gordy's Goats, a classic. You played it? A little. Mm -hmm. Feels like a lot. Too much to play it again. <laughs> I must play the pinball. Oh, great. <laughs> Cornelius Gordy and the Mountain Goats reads the golden lettering on top of the back box. There's a small column of text underneath. The machine is coin operated. Get the game on, finger boy. Those flippers are ready. Learning closer to read the text. Above the painting of a moustached man climbing a hill, a column reads, inspired by the legend of Cornelius Gordy, taken on the world's tallest peak, Corpus Windy. The mask legend holds that when the nation is in danger, heroic Gordy shall return and save his people. 
Okay. The theme of the game is to explore Gordy's climb through the perspective of goats <laughs> and to ascend to the top of the mountain in a time of trouble. The peak of the mountain is at the top of the playfield. All the balls have small goat icons on them and represent the goats as they race up and down the mountain. Areas around the playfield represent Gordy's climb, places he was said to have camped, which the goats can discover. Get them to the summit. What's with all the goats? Indeed. Think of them as balls. Okay. One royale. Must be used. It takes a while to get into a rhythm, but pretty soon you're able to keep three goat-faced balls in play with relative ease. Go, go, finger boy. Go, go! I feel sorry for the goats. If they only knew the kind of guy old Cornelius really was. Well, what kind of guy was he? The kind of a guy who uses the word savages a lot when recounting his travels. A masked nationalist. Oh, a racist mountaineer. An avid huntsman too. He was often photographed in his dining hall, surrounded by wall-mounted hunting trophies from every continent. That is not cool. He also hit his wife. Oh. And kids. Oh. Other people's kids too. Oh. Sometimes pets. Oh. Hateful little man. But you seem to be having fun. I I'm pretty good at this. Your game is definitely improving. The jolly goats are flying all over the board. And although a few plummet to their deaths, <laughs> you're never left with less than three. Suddenly, a special passage leading to the summit slides open at the top of the board. This is where the balls need to go. Concentrate and aim for the narrow Move passage. Move goat ball into a position for a perfect hit isn't easy more fall to their deaths but finally the opportunity presents itself one of them gets through tiny hammer shatters something inside the machine something glass the words pale rupture light up on the speaker panel and the machine starts filling with a thick milky fog oh something's happening oh no congratulations this is where the game ends it's a cheap way of getting more money out of the players. A stupid nihilistic finale. There's so much fog you can I appreciate the, uh, Some the commentary. You leak it out of the machine, and one by one, your goats start slipping, disappearing into the milky nothingness. This can be navigated. The balls leave almost imperceptible disruptions in the fog. Use them to calculate where they hit next. You're down to your last goat. Oh my god. Mostly by sound. Eyes are useless at this point. But that goat is something special. Five times you snatch him back from the jaws of death. Kim, it can be done. Just watch. I am. I've seen it before. Played it too. You will eventually make a mistake and then it's all over. I can't do this. I can't. I can't do this. I can't, I, oh. I must come back to win the pinball. Hmm. I've been wondering the same. There goes nothing, finger boy. I must, I must come back for this. All these mesmerizing machines. Just waiting. I need to come back, back for this. Play. Run your finger across the dust of the white Dior machine. Feels like it might jump back to life any moment. The lights illuminating the white-robed woman. Who? What's white Dior? Some kind of inane pinball theme, probably related to Messina during the DeLorean age. The history themes are the worst. The lieutenant grimaces, looking at the machines. How about we fire one of these bad boys and play some ball? You can't fire them up. Oh. They're broken. Only that one machine in the main hall works. The Royalist Pinball. What a dumb name. Royalist Pinball. If they weren't broken, he would kick one of these machines about now. Sounds like you don't enjoy pinball, no, Kim. I love it. I love pinball. Who doesn't love pinball? What about, one. what about the other one? The Franco-Nigerian ball? No. Oh. It's strange that he doesn't like pinball. Kim here is a Seolite. His people are incredibly dexterous. Oh no. And they all love 
been born. Oh no, racism. Matter of fact. Oh no, racism. No. Us? Guys? Oh crap. Stop. No oh, matter, this is a failure. I'm failing. I'm <laughs> volition. Stop. Yes, sir. Okay. I don't like pinball because I had to learn to play it for an undercover job at a pinball ring. And it's a lame, boring, and unchallenging game. There. We can move on now. Super. Tip top. This went pretty well, all things considered. I love how Volition, all he had us do was say, stop. And that was it. And I was like, yeah, yup. 100% agreed. This small elevator is dimly lit by a bulb that's been smells of nougat and sweat. Of what? Your head brushes up against the ceiling. There is a control panel to your right. The maintenance card under the control panel reads, Last maintenance, 10th July, 88. Oh God, 70 years there or something? There are large rectangular buttons. Monte, the song. That it does. I say, let's brave it. Damn. No, it was maintained in 88 of the previous century. Oh, I chose the extremely dumb... So it's not a message from the future? No, I think the bureaucrats just forgot about his backroom elevator after the revolution. Seems like a small freight elevator for transporting machinery. For that, it's pretty quaint. Close the doors and go up. Oh, what the hell? Where the hell am I? Hip pinball machine. Yo, that coat though. Wait, okay, let me put my let me put my armor back on. But that coat though, plus one empathy, plus one hand-eye coordination. Yo, Dick Mullen on the scene. Hot damn. I love playing alcoholic dress up. What's uh Oh, that's the kingdom trousers. We don't want those. Eh. You clearly see footprints in the downy carpet of dust covering the workshop floor. Jackpot. These, and like everything else here, are new. Someone's been here within the last week or two. Three weeks maximum. Oh. the dust coverage. It could easily have been one week, too. You know, officer. Mm -hmm. This is good. He likes it. That's a little smile there, in the dark of the workshop. It was a stereo investigation after all. It has now converged with our main investigation, adding a new fact to consider. Okay, what does this mean? It means someone snuck through what seems like a secret route behind Classius' room in the recent weeks. This may prove to be significant. Okay, they would have need the key for it. Behind her room? Oh, it could have been the dead guy. Large prints, most likely made by boots. The size is hard to determine. Soul could be bigger than vamp. The soles have left the pattern, uniform, horizontal lines. This print is not like the odd sold print we found the hanging. The size looks about the same, actually. They're not the same shoe, but they could be the same person. Hmm. No, these little horizontal lines are different. They look custom made to me. Or some kind of foreign print. Mm, it could. Oh, this could have been where the uh, where the mercenary guy who got hung was staying. Different foreign prints, you know. Everything around you is quiet. The prince. Ah, uh, I mean, I mean, it's behind her room. Secret passage, a way for him to chill. Tiny hole in the wall. You see a bedroom on the other side. You can almost see the shape of a man and a woman writhing inside. Oh, okay. Bathed in drug sweat and dirty linens. Oh dear. Bottles lie around everywhere. You can barely see through. Better not to jump to sensationalist conclusions here. So there's a peephole. The footprints on the floor, however, definitely suspicious. Wait. Boring footprints. I want to jump to sensationalist conclusions. Goddamn electric. You lean closer to the peephole. There's a peephole. I bet they're doing something quite unnatural there. Sensationally unnatural. No, then it wouldn't be him. It would be a creep. 
A peep in Tom. This is the barred door you tried to kick in before. Lightly punch the door once more just in case. The door shudders a bit as though it were laughing at you. Unbar the door. Hey, I'm back. Officer, it's a fine day for questions. Oh. oh, that's a good volition roll. I'm gonna ask. It's time. Soft, light brown <sighs> eyes look back at you, directly into the space behind your eye sockets. You see the smoke rise from between her painted red lips. She's beautiful. I have bad news for you. What? You know these guys? Who? Me? <laughs> Yes, you. He's talking about you, you groveling sycophant. Why, why, are, why are all of my psyches yelling at each other? You too. Me? Get out of here. I'm solid. These guys are compromised. She's got them singing along to her tune. The little bleeps and bloops you trust for info. You can't trust them anymore. What? Believe it. Which ones are affected? There's no way of knowing. At the moment, I'm afraid it's best to assume all of them. Bullshit, man. I ain't compromised. Especially that guy. <laughs> that guy's the most compromised one in here. Oh my god. Wait. No fucking way, man. I just want a drag of that sweet menthol Ziggy. Really? Quick. Tell me what's under her jumpsuit. Glory. Truth. Softness. <laughs> Protect her. She wants you. <laughs> I take it back. He's got it pretty bad. But this next guy's on another level entirely. Half light? She likes you. Oh, the suggestion. The crown is a boring condom. He's jealous. This is human nature. The crown head volition. How it always does. Through subtlety. What can I do? There's nothing you can do about it. You are how you are, and she is how she is. Things will go as they do. Can you turn to normal again? No. What use is this then? It's better to know you're being played than to be played without knowing it, is it not? This means she's been lying to me? I think it's safe to assume, yes. Mr. Thespian here hasn't been speaking up. If he were, I suspect there would be peons to her truthfulness, like this. No, he's not going to show up. I'm sorry, your lie detection isn't working. It's not her doing. He's just totally inept. It looks like you're also an idiot, but that's not her fault. Mr. Thespian? Which one is that supposed to be? <laughs> no, not an idiot. You're just more of a sensitive type. Thinks with his heart. This woman's pain draws you in. That's fair. It makes sense that my own emotions would screw with me with this situation. You can't draw a sound conclusion. The one he usually does says, huh? No, Mr. Conclusion. You're always kind of limited in your analytical abilities. That's not <laughs> her fault, but still. My logic is so down they're not even answering because I'm that stupid. Don't worry. It's only been four or five seconds. You've got this. Just close your eyes on the moment pass. For a second, her face disappears from your cornea. Only a silvery negative remains. Still smiling. A tired smile. <sighs> She's playing me. There's a people in here. And she's playing me. I had a feeling she was playing me, but now I can't even trust my own emotions. Oh. I want to question her on that, but I want to talk to Titus first. So I'm going to do that. The clowns are still hanging around. What is it now? She says she was, yep. Fuck. I knew that fucking whore couldn't be trusted. 
Oh, wow, that was not a response I expected. You've hit a nerve. Titus is furious. No, more than that. The loyal Titus feels betrayed. For the record, Titus Hardy did not explicitly specify the victim as a whore. Oh. Nor did he say anything about trusting her. My God, Elizabeth. Shut up. Oh, shut up and stay out of this, Liz. Yeah, Liz. He raped her. He was out of his fucking mind. You have no idea. She's just in denial, asshole. You don't understand the traumatic experience. She's shutting down. And she doesn't fucking trust you. Yeah, she's crazy, you know. A crazy bitch. You know the type. She's fucked up. Yeah, I cut the bullshit. She told me the truth. Lawman, I'm at the end of my goddamn rope with you. I fucking told you not to push her. His hands become fists. Oh, boy. And you went and pushed her. I am gonna fucking... Titus Hardy. Success. Titus backs off. Fists down, everybody. Goddamn, no one tells you to put your fists down. Everett personally sent me to take care of this. If this goes south, we'll all be in the shit. But you, Titus Hardy, are going to be buried. Am I understood? No, I try not to listen to anything you say. The room is so quiet you could hear a pin drop. The rest of the cafeteria has gone quiet, too. Someone has to rush in to break the tension. The second in command. Look, Copper. We know that that fuck was a racist and a killer. We got him confessing to it on tape. Show it to him, T. What's the harm, right? Tape? Here, jerkwad. Listen to this shit. And then come back and tell me the soldier of the apocalypse was an innocent man. What? Why should I care about tape? You don't care about evidence. The fuck are you a cop for then? Big T. They don't care about getting the truth. They care about getting convictions. They are fucking keeping a score on their bulletin boards. I won't be on your bulletin board. If you don't listen to the tape, we got nothing to talk about. What's on it? We call it the Dorgun a Mega Mix. <laughs> you know why? Won't you listen to it? Dorgun or Mega Mix? You think we go into this shit deaf and dumb? You RCM are the only ones who know how to bug people. There's no university degree for that. We have machines. We're in logistics. How do you think a harbor works? It's advanced stuff. I mean, they did say that Everard had everything bugged, so. You've listened in on their communications. How long? Since way before their chief started taking swing lessons. Things got nice and quiet after that. Mm. It's not advanced. You just hold up in a coop all day, writing down what they say. It gets hot as hell in there. Well, that was an easy answer. Don't put yourself down, Angus. It's important work. Yeah, man. They're like a radio genius or something. Those notes are some in-depth stuff. Indexes and shit. Hmm. I'm sure we can find a tape player. Where can I listen to this? Why don't you try shoving it up your ass, genius? Yeah, play it with your ass, cocksucker. I'm sure we can find a tape player. It's not a problem. I think we can buy one from, um, Roy. Your room had one. Or maybe it's too broken. Ah, crap. Don't forget your tape, lawman. Compliments and Titus Hardy. You do that. Oh, and keep it. Maybe you'll need a reminder of human ugliness someday. There's a lot going on with this now. There are so many... There's so many things happening at once. Ugh. Lawyers. You know... We might as well, uh, try, maybe we can repair the, the thing. I'm pretty bad at it, but the compact my interface is not bad. And silent. Seems it has completely broken down now. There's no fixing this one. Shit. This would have been very helpful with the Mega Mix, but it isn't anymore. My Kinema only comes with radio. 
Let's try to find a new tape player. Perhaps we should talk to Roy at the pawn shop. He has stuff. He does have stuff. That was that was my thought. Yep, yep, yep. You stare at the great door gunner mega mix. If only you had a boombox, you would be able to play Titus's tape. The tape feels ominous. Upon it, the dead speak. Respect the tape. Oh yeah, what about my oh yeah, my, my ledger? Oh, and the cool piece of toilet paper is stuck to the back. It's just toilet paper. Stick it to the back of the plastic clipboard. You can take it off if you want. Take it off. Still wet. The toilet oh, paper yeah. oh. off the plastic easily. All you have to do is shake it off with your finger and voila. The ledger now looks marginally better. White paper. They're not exactly white. They're yellowed in patches by sunlight and alcohol and covered in dense blue handwriting. Ink escapes into watercolor patterns, reaching its tendrils across entire pages. The paper itself is checkered with faint red lines, forming short paragraphs. Once in a while, there's a red stamp that exclaims, case files commit to paper. The case files themselves are plenty. You count more than a hundred sodden, crumpled up, earmarked pages falling apart in your hands. They appear to be sufficiently organized and extremely dense, if mostly illegible. Work, strife, poverty, the Jamrock Quarter. These are handwritten logs of investigations dating back to January 51 this year. The exact number is hard to estimate due to missing pages and an odd naming convention. But there are at least 20, maybe 30. Wait, there was mention undertaken, not completed, mind you. By nine million conventions? Yes. It appears you employ a, shall we say, robust yet literary system. Each investigation has its case number written on the margins. Yet, still more tellingly, most are accompanied by a name. Yes, all caps. One is called the Next World Mural. Another, the Square Bullet Hole Murders. Another yet, the Unsolvable Case. Others appear more lighthearted. The guys on a couch in an unexpected location and the murder at the Ukar parlor. Even the rare article free collapsing tenement. Murder features prominently throughout. You like this grimy murdering, don't you? It's going to take an effort to piece these case files together. But it oh, can damn. be done. Once you're done inspecting them up close. Kim, my cases appear to be employed some kind of naming convention. You mean the alphanumeric? Officer, precinct, time of arrival at the scene? No, I mean non-numeric ones, the titles. Oh, you mean the titular? Yes, well, so do I. In our defense, almost everyone in the RCM does. It's a holdover from the early days of the RCM, right after the revolution, when the organization had little idea how to do things. It persists in an unofficial capacity. Officers use these titles to refer to their work among themselves. I seem to have named the case the Square Bullet Hole Murders. Again, in your defense, I seem to have named one... The man with the hole in his head. That was a real person. His death was real. Still, I named it that. To amuse myself. I pray his loved ones never find out. <laughs> Rail spiked through the head. He died. It was a workplace accident. You don't exactly close them. So oh my god, my logic. From the smelly papers. Okay, I'll, I'll read the rest of the ledger later. We need to get this to Roy. We need to get to Roy first so we can buy his stuff. A tape player. Okay, so I do have plenty of money. At least, if anything. Can I do the check with Renee? Vigilance officer. Nope. Oh, do Maybells mean anything to you, Renee? Show him the flower. I prefer the old name. Insulindian Lily. Girls brought them to young cadets when they entered service. Wearing them on your cap was supposed to bring good luck. Or else military it tradition? used to be. But the communards were fond of them too. Call them revolutionary flowers. Bells of the revolution. You know what? Oh, damn, I leveled up. No. They brought me misery. False hope. And disappointment. The revolutionaries oh, sullied them. 
He stirred up some bad memories there. Crap. But it wasn't the revolutionaries oh. that sullied the ID for you, was it? She gave them to me too. And your jealous little heart just couldn't accept it. Enough. I can go over these matters in detail with you, Gaston. But not while we have company. So, officers. Maybes don't blossom yet, do they? Maybe on some remote parts of the city they do. Uh, but I think you have to wait for at least a month. Okay. All right. I, no, nothing to help me do the check any better. We gotta go talk to Roy. Because Roy's a baller. Oh. Oh, there's a, a motorix check over here. Wow. A very large red t-shirt with an impressive print stands out from the other car. Oh, yeah. The print depicts a muscled man striding oh. toward you. Oh. A giant sword in each hand, oh. circled by burning embers. Behind him is a cluster of cabins engulfed in flames. What? Beneath him are the words, Hyeondal burning. Oh, sniff the t-shirt? Smells like worn cotton and a little old sweat there. Worn cotton with a side of flea market or trash bin. Sniffing is okay, but please don't try anything on. Can't have you leaving your photon emissions in the fabric of things you're not going to buy. You know, Roy, I would normally be upset with that stupid statement, but you're a baller, so it's okay now. You're not imagining it. Photon emissions? What is he talking about? That's a rad man from Hyamdal t-shirt you got there. Oh yeah, man. <laughs> I don't usually carry printed tees, but this one was just... Pure exemplar. You must be a serious man from Hyamdal fan. A fan? No, I wouldn't go that far. But I do think the Hyamdalaman saga is an integral part of our shared reality. Most people don't think that the man from Hyamdal really existed. But they're wrong. I mean, Whew. even if the man from Hyamdal didn't Have a good one, all you GP folk. Novels, Thanks. The stories have made it so that I'm very into this. It's simple, really. Okay. Of course, you sound incredulous, Kim. You sound skeptical. Yeah, he does. It's not that complicated. All that's required is a more robust understanding of cause and effect. Besides, I've been to Kotla, though not quite oh. as far north as the Hyundal. So he's traveled through the Pale. Northern lights travel across the sky. Very unique energetic tides there. Very, very unique energies, indeed. Geomagnetic ley lines, one might even say. How much is the t-shirt for? Two real. That's dirt cheap. Couldn't you just give it to me for free then? But why? The man from Heimdall is a superstar. I am a superstar. It'd be perfect. I suppose that makes sense, yes. Oh. Please go ahead and take it. Welcome to Hyomdal. Holy shit, he actually gave me the shirt. Damn, that's a baller shirt. It's minus two authority, but the physical instrument in Shivers is great. Though I feel like... I don't know why I ever would take off the armor, though. The Curus is so good. I also kind of need authority. I'm just happy I have the shirt. I care more about having the shirt. Hello, hello. Let me know if I can help you with anything. Sure, let me have a look. I'm not purchasing any more clothing at the moment. And certainly not expensive armor that's like anything else you're All thinking right. of selling. I do need to sell something. Here's a banged up fuel canister. Uh, we don't want to pawn off that. We can pawn off the postcards, I suppose. Ah, the rest is fine. Oops. Uh, Another time. Yeah. There we, go. we still have those boom boxes on the shelves. Oh, um. Right. So, oh, I just click, I just click on them, right? Wait on the shelves, and your boom box, that gold and amber. Harmon Walshi. Sorry, man. I can't be giving out freebies. Never have. Won't now. You gave me the shirt. Okay. A discount? I do have to keep the lights on, man. 
It's 12 real. Just don't ask him for the smallest amount. You'll insult him. The others will work. How's 10 go? Sounds like a ripoff, but okay. I can make it 10, but no lower. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Roy. I don't wanna, I don't wanna like, finagle you or anything, but I am kinda broke. And here you are. Quality sound reproduction on the- I've got one more night in the whirling and then I'm anything. out. Wherever. Turn any tape into a conversation of sounds and shapes. Well, that's that, I guess. Oh my god, I'm literally holding it on. Oh my god. The portal reel is just what you needed. The reels attach to the apparatus with a satisfying click. The tape is rooted behind the magnetic reader. Play the tape. You push, command set, and the tape starts spinning. Violence. Just in the pawn shop. Sounds fill the air. This isn't Remishar. This is a fucking village. I can almost see the elephants. Oh God. The harbor. That's the son of a Kvalsund crane. When this shit is done, I'm gonna tear that place up. Soldier of the Apocalypse style. Kill shit. Dogs and chickens too. Gonna run a room, Cordy. A real nice room. I don't give a shit. I'm fucking done. I'm done mentally. I'll fucking do them all in. Rape that disco con on the counter, you know, the dance a whore upstairs. Do it Kohoi style. Never did get that taste out of my mouth. Yikes. Awarded a singular one. The lieutenant presses the button marked Arete on your porter reel. The tape stops spinning. End of recording. It seemed authentic enough. Probably recorded off the shortwave, then edited to seem more incriminating. He sounded like he was on patrol around the harbor walls. He also sounds inebriated. Still. You're familiar with its look now, its look of looks of suspicion. There's more going on here than we know. Who is Corey? One of the other mercenaries, I think. Yeah. The one he was talking to. A friend of his. Cool. A village on the Samaran Isola. In South Safri, Grad committed war crimes there, the kind of thing he talks about. Oh. Who knows? Maybe the tattoos would have an answer. Or maybe Kohoi is just murk talk for atrocity, slaughter. I think we've got a few more questions for class here, don't you? This seems to contradict her testimony, at least to some degree. As you take out the tape, the boombox tunes itself back to the cheery radio again, spewing out beats like it's a Friday night. The contrast feels chilly. Inappropriate, even. Okay, well, I'm gonna put this boombox down, because it feels weird to be carrying this. But, um... That, oh, uh, it, it's... The tape doesn't sound authentic. The... The Hardy Boys don't sound like that. I like, it feels like more is going on. It doesn't feel correct. Everyone's lying to me. Every single person is lying to me. It's so difficult to discern. I'm gonna talk to Titus first. The clouds are still hanging around. <sighs> what is it now? Oh. So I've listened to the tape. Smart boy. You go do that. Okay, well, that's not what I was hoping for in terms of statements, but we'll go with that, I suppose. Hmm. Uh, I don't know if you know how I feel about confronting her with this. Officer, it's a fine day for questions. Mm, all right, here we go. Give us a corner with the ceased. She puts her coffee cup down with a soft ring as the porcelain meets the metal table. This does not surprise her. Mm. Did he? 
I never said he was a good man, or that he had good intentions, only that he was never bad to me. Unless if he specifically identifies you as the target. Mm, where did they get this recording exactly? It's intercepted radio chatter of the deceased, recorded via the encryption station. It's authentic enough. Does he say he's going to do it Soldier of the Apocalypse style? Those are the exact words he yeah. used. That was practically his pickup line. Oh, God. A memory surfaces in her tired neocortex. It's not entirely unpleasant. Did he say whores a lot? Was he pretty much on the verge of doing it Koholi style? God, she knows everything. How, oh, I can't break through this facade. He liked the way it sounded when he said it. As to Kohoi, I said you at the butt of roll one. He wasn't actually there. He didn't do a tour, or at least didn't tell me he did. Would have been overkill anyway. He lived his own little Kohoi. It wasn't his everything. Why say these things? Like he's yes. Was he bragging? Oh no, I'm pretty sure he did all those things, then integrated them into his idea of normalcy, to keep on living, until they just sort of turn into his, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Copy mechanism? Running joke. Mm. I was gonna say running joke. And it sounds like he didn't even get the good bits. Lely's punchlines got way, way funkier than that. That's a name. Lely. He was like the Seminese Did we ever find his name before that? The massacre and the 36 famine in Yezud all rolled into one person, then cast in Orani ceramic armor, which he wore in bed and in the shower. What? When he said he was done, and done mentally, it didn't sound like a joke. It sounded like a deeply troubled man. Wait, we weren't supposed to trust empathy. Volition said don't trust empathy. You like this kind of We're stuff? We're scraping up any happiness we can find, officer. Going around with our little scouring sticks. You, your first love, mm -hmm. Mr. Kohoi here. Did he tell you he had actually done any of those things in Martinez, I mean? No. We were too busy laying waste to our own nervous systems to direct any of the fury outward. He seemed... He seemed happy, I guess. At ease. As much as a man like him could be. There is a small measure of pride in her that she could quell the rage in such a being. Thank you for clearing that up, miss. Whenever you're ready. I'm interested to hear what Titus Hardy has to say now. She takes a very small sip of her coffee and smiles. Oh, I don't know what to do, man. I don't know what to do. It's so difficult. I want to ask questions, but I want to be respectful, but I don't I don't understand. I do not understand what the right option is. The clowns are still hanging around. What is it now? And and nothing. She stands by what she said. That fucking fucker. You're the worst cops in Revishaw. I gave you gold on that tape. She pretty much laughed it off, Titus. Fucking fuckity fucker. And what did she say then? That it's fine. People are supposed to be like that. Sounds like he wanted it to change her mind about the hanged man. This is definitely personal. Did not come as a surprise to her and definitely was not still. Made her a little nostalgic. Anything she seemed... Okay, I'm not doing the turned on part, but I'll, I'll come with the, this part. Yes. In fact, I think she thought it was a little funny. Funny? No good goddamn psycho whore. All right. All fucking righty then. I guess it's good then. That fucking 
please try to control yourself in the presence of visitors. I no, no, keep going, Tyrus. I like this. This is just perfect. Just fucking perfect. Any thoughts on this, lawmen? I think this is personal for you. I'm just going to hit him with it. I think you have feelings with her. I'm just going to hit him with it. Yeah, they're all queers. Can't bump hard fist or anything. That's not what you said, but okay. It's all right, Blynn. I just thought, gee, I thought anyone would come around if they heard that shit. Apparently, I was wrong. Come around in what way, Titus? To you? Or to change her mind on the guy? Yeah, that was fucked up. You wanted her to see the man for what he was. Now that you know, you might want to lay off this topic. Or else you might antagonize him. I just got too worked up. Big man lost his shit. It's cool now. Maybe she's still in denial, you know, like a defense mechanism? Yeah, maybe. Oof. That is a possibility. He does not sound very convinced anymore. Nah. I know her. She's just a girl. In over her head. <sighs> what kind of pro? Y'all saying she's a hooker? That's not what I said. No. He's not saying that. Forget about it. Oh, god damn it. Alright, be straight with me, Titus. I already told you. We fucking hanged him. God damn it, Titus. There's less gusto in his voice now. His men, too, are growing increasingly silent. Come on, Titus. We know you didn't hang him. He was shot. I know you're tired. So am I. Why don't you just... You know what? I am tired. I'm tired of you and the whore upstairs. Next time you see her, tell her. Titus said. Fuck off! That was a great delivery. Holy shit. This is the petulant rage of someone who's at the end of their wits. That lion scamming. We're done. This is over. You understand? Your little investigation is over. Yeah. There's a silence in the room. Elaine is, starts saying something, then thinks best not to. On the floor, bear drips out of the can into a small puddle. No one does anything about it. What is this quiet funeral shit? All we need is some beers in us. Bartender, 20 beers for the dock workers union. Why do we make it 40, huh? Why do we make it 100 beers? You're not loud enough. <laughs> 100 beers? Now we're talking. Hoppity hop over here, cafeteria manager. The window might be closing. The more beers they get in them, the less cooperative they will be. Oh my god. No, no. Of all the things we have to check, why does it have to be rhetoric? Why does it have to be a blue check? I have so much plus one on here and I still can't get it. Why did it have to be rhetoric? Why? Why? Oh. Uh. <sighs> There's so much going on. Oh yeah, my dice! Wait. Oh yeah, no, I got it. I should get my dice back. Why not? Titus is not happy. Titus is not happy in the slightest. If you tell me it's dark, I'm gonna 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 yell, Kim. I'm gonna yell. Okay, it's pretty dark. Hey, how's it going? Oh, it's you again. Are you looking for a die? Yes! Excellent. That will be 10 real for one set of magnetic dies. This was an especially fun set to make. Dazzling. It's like you have a pair of tiny disco balls in your hand. 
Yay! Two fun dies. No, look at the map tab in general to see which white texts have, op text have opened. Wait, what? More white ones have opened because of the dies? Bizarre. We have a lot of white text, uh, white attempts we need to do though. I still haven't found the woman, the the woman driver. I mean, shit, it could be. I, hmm. We also need to talk to Cindy because we need to get on that grind set. We also need to, you know, we'll go do this white check over here for Motorix while we're here. A small mountain of colorful board game. The display rack is br Oh, I could buy the, the Handelman book or whatever. Is it up here? Shells. There we are. Who is Dick Mullen? Your quick eye notices a small caterpillar crawling across the spine of a book. The title reads, Dick Mullen and the Mistaken Identity. What do we have here? A worn paperback from Dick Mullen's classic hard-boiled phase. The premise seems to be that Dick Mullen is framed for the murder of his best friend and has just a few days to prove his innocence. Why does this speak to me? Could it be the motifs of unstable identities and shocking betrayals? Yeah. Then this is the book for you. I don't. I don't. I, I succeeded the check. I don't really want to buy the Dick Mullen book. I'm a little low on money. All right. Other checks. Gaston. Map wall, wash basin. Damage the ledger. Titus. And a few others. I guess I'll go talk to Cindy the Skull and see her mural and, and, and we'll, we'll go. You know what? There's no better way to get more money than just do the grind. Hello again, officers. Have you come to admire my mural? It's your lucky day. I'm looking to acquire some original art by the creme de la creme. What's that? The piggy is looking to get into the art market with a snappy business pitch. Watch out, or you'll be auctioned off and face the chop. Face a line across her throat with a thumb. The lieutenant straightens his back, waiting to see where this is going. Oh no. Relax. It's all part of her image. No one speaks to a police officer in that tone. Show the little missy here her place. She stares at you, fearlessly, waiting for a response. Pretend you're a pig stuck in a cage. Help, let me out. I don't want to die. Whoa. Calm it with that shit, cop. I don't have any art you can buy. Jeez. <laughs> the whole point of graffitio being on the street is so everyone can see it. No charge. Expression for all. There has to be a way to convince her. Everyone has a price. But how does she make a living? How does she keep a roof over her head? It must be hard. Quit playing. Tell me the price will make you rich and successful. Let's go, money. I don't have a price. Damn if it. If I wanted to haul myself out, I'd go to Porto Rosa. Or better yet, I'd take you with me and pimp you out to some friends of mine. They'd be delighted to get their hands on a squealing pink thing like you. Cut off your ears. Make some pig soup out of them. Now sod off. You've got nothing to offer that would make me change my mind. Well, shit. Perfect. She isn't interested. All the more reason to move on from this little side task. Your partner here gets it. Anything else I can not do for you, gentlemen? The, I, I, gotta, I gotta mention the other weirdos. I don't believe it. 
I've never known those boys to have manners. The bemusement in her voice doesn't fully mask genuine tenderness. I think they're afraid of you. They'll never be skulls, but, but their hearts are in the right place. Can I be a skull? Fat chance. Oh. But you can still do your part to revitalize the neighborhood. But I really want to be a skull. She throws you a conspiratorial glance, then presses her finger to her lips and squints up at the sky, as though straining to hear something in the distance. Have you noticed the quiet? Every so often, you might hear a gunshot pierce the air somewhere in Jamrock. But in Martinez, no gunshots, no sirens. The people are languishing in boredom and complacency. This place is a sepulcher. We'll paint it red. We bring the raucous. You bring the sirens. Oh my god, wait. Convince her to show you her art. Plus one for Wompty Dompty Dom. 42% chance. We can try it. She's locked up tight. What does she want? Maybe it's as simple as asking her. But whine about it so she feels superior. Come on, is there any other way to prove myself worthy? Squeal. Then maybe we can talk business. Squeal, but only a little. Squeal a moderate amount. Squeal ignominiously. Turn to the lieutenant. Kim, you do it. No way. Aw, come on. I was just starting to have some fun. God damn it. All right, you know what? You want you want to do this like this? I'm going to do it. Okay, enough is this. Have you come? Sure. She's all draped up. Yes! Attachment, but everyone's got to eat. I do have something to offer in exchange for your art. Money. Great. A little foray into the art world continues. <laughs> blah, blah. I already told you. I'm not for sale, Pigo. Told you. Told you these artist types repel wealth. Well, crap. Turn it around. It's the seller who wields the power in this relationship. Really? You're just gonna, going to let go of a chance to milk some stupid pig rolling in cash? Uh-oh, you're manipulating me. I do like a chance to rip off some stupid pigos. And I need a pack of cigarettes. And some paint. Okay, whatever, piggy. Time to leech off each other like the parasites we are. Let me see what I've got. Even the lieutenant leans closer to inspect the work. Here. Happy? The pasta looks sad and damaged as if it's been ripped out of some bigger piece. A glitzy barnacle of colors covers the, circus, the surface. Remember, this is a buyer's market. You're the one who's in charge of pricing. Show it to me. She juts out her hand, mm. letting you examine the piece. Three red splotches have been shot at a diagonal across the surface. Tinier spots of various colors fan out from the same point of origin. Well, Pigo, what do you make of it? The angle of the paint drops reveals that they were fired at the canvas with the force of a hand cannon. It's one of those ink blot tests, an invitation to connect with the divine. No, I think someone got shot. Yes, my artistic integrity. She is, despite the demeanor, playing this game brings no joy to her. She cares about art and her private relationship to it. How would you describe this one of your signature pieces? Signature? Oh yeah, pigster. I sneezed while holding a wet brush. Paint flecked onto the canvas and voila, you don't get more signature than that. So you paint the sneeze, truly remarkable, a clear sign of genius. That's what I said, Piglet. 67,000 real. Damn. And your head on a silver tray. That's not working. Remember, this isn't about the art or the artist. This needless purchase implies your excessive wealth. Art Wait. comes across as more tasteful than simply hanging cash 
on the wall. Wait, sa save your fat. Wait, hold on, dude. You're, th this is this isn't what I asked for. She may antagonize you, but she's still a struggling artist with no prospects. She needs as much money as you can give. Lowball her. The wretched are used to rolling with the punches. How about ten? Is that it. All right. Holy shit. It all helps. Splendid. Your first physical asset. But no time to stop. Money grows old unless it keeps moving. You need to find a buyer. This is Preferably hilarious to me. I love I love how the ultra liberal method is art selling. Artist. Art selling. The one thing that literally has no intrinsic value or understandable like scale and is entirely decided by the ultra wealthy just because it's a game to them. Like, it's perfect. It's such a perfect so, uh, commentary. I love it. Uh, how about Joyce? Nah. She'd probably send the entire Wild Pines legal team after you if she knew you were trading goods around their harbor. She's ready and poised for a hostile takeover. Everard? Hmm. Doing business with communist dictatorships only works if you've got long-term plans in place. No. Which you don't. Not Gart. And become a small-time art peddler. There must be someone around here with heavy pockets and an interest in the local art. Tell you what, have a wander around and I'll let you know if I hear any wealth. You can hear it? Yes, if you know what to listen for. That's what happens when you've been in the game for as long as I have. Oh my You're god. Sensitive. I got some vibes from that container you moved with the crane in the harbor. What? Let's see what's inside. There isn't a door yet that Savvy's VIP status couldn't open. Look at us. Coming to an agreement. Who'd have thought? Anything else you want? I'm in a good mood, but it won't last long. Okay. Well, I have... Oh, that is so bad. Hey, wait a minute. I can sell it for 15 royale to Roy. Let's go.